Dakle, ishodište novog svijeta koje se predviđa naravno u jednom potpuno novom ruhu, odnosno digitalni svijet koji bi trebalo da ovlada našim životima, kao da računa na neku energiju koja dolazi na kraju s neba, jer što bi rekao jedan moj prijatelj kad su krenuli oni digitalni bitcoini, zapravo kad je krenula priča o tome da se preko kompjutera ulazi u sistem u kome možeš da se obogatiš i onda su svi poletili kao ludi da budu bogatiji, a jedan moj prijatelj je rekao, a šta ako mi isključe struju u mom selu i znači ili to da sam ja izgubio svoj novac za uvijek. Tako i taj digitalni svijet izgleda računa na neku vrstu energije koja bi trebalo da upotpuni dakle pametni grad do mjere u kojoj bi on zapravo bio veći potrošač po mojim procjenama energije nego što su svi gradovi do sad bili. Dakle, grad u kome se vrata otvoraju sama, u kojima ljudi borave manje više ne krećući se ili koji kako kaže Nobelovac iz Južne Koreje čovjek mora odgovorno da diše. and the hotels. So there are some kind of trade-offs between the virtual transactions and the real world transactions. So the platform economy needs to be decentralized and a lot more democratized and it should not be monopolistic. This is some kind of challenges Cloud City or the platform is posing to us. And there are already some technologies and new form of decentralized uh, platform available just providing services to the companies and to the people not monopolizing the data not exploiting exploiting the uh, real world a real economy uh, job opportunities from the taxi drivers and others so there are technologies available I don't have time to go into detail okay so this is the one dimension we have to also be a lot on how what should be changed Answering to your second question is, yes, I have been working on climate change for a long time, for three decades. We are, as a consumer, we are sitting here. I don't have to repeat how serious the climate disaster is. I don't have to repeat it. You are reading it every day on TV and newspaper. Now, what all of us, as we are sitting here, we expect that government and business will solve the problems. We are watching and waiting as an outsider and waiting them to solve the problems. This is the situation for climate change. But I have been realizing that government has a very limited role, even though their leadership is very critical, but the leadership alone is not practical because we need, government needs far lower support from the people and consumers without the support or participation sharing the responsibility by the consumers. Government alone cannot do much. And the business likewise also cannot go very far. If the consumers do not buy the green product or the renewable energy product, then business alone cannot go very far in addressing the climate challenges. Here, I am always emphasizing that the consumer participation, sharing the responsibility from the government and from the business is now very critical. And for that, I am proposing that digital platform provide, provide us a great opportunity to share the responsibility. How? I will tell you that whenever I am speaking, uh, giving a lecture to the young student in Moscow State University or Russian Presidential Academy, I am a regular visitor and give lectures to young students here in Russia. And I always found out that there is a great willingness of the young generation to participate in taking action for climate change. They are just they are frustrated from the fact that 
there's no option or system available for them to join in fighting climate change. So, what I'm proposing is that, based on the digital technology, this digital platform can provide you how much CO2 each one of you are producing and you are responsible for certain quantity of CO2 from your daily life. And then, based on this data, consumers can decide how much should I pay for it. Unless consumers are not willing to pay for it, it's almost impossible only using government budget money and the business investment to solve this whole problem is not possible. The consumers have to join voluntarily to address this issue and share the responsibility. And the digital platform can provide this kind of opportunity. I don't have time to go into detail how can you do it, but I'm always emphasizing now is the time for the young generation to come up with a me first campaign. Me first means I should be the one who should be the first to pay the CO2 that I am producing or I am responsible. Without this kind of voluntary and the proactive participation, it's difficult, very almost impossible to solve the challenge of climate change. And for that, platform, digital technology can provide opportunity for application, apps, you can download it, okay, you can make a voluntary payment or deposit in the climate fund so that this climate fund can make an investment. So these, there are many ideas we can go on. So I don't have time for it, so I will stop here, but if you have any questions, I will come back. Спасибо большое. У меня можно сразу, да, друзья, аплодисменты. Сразу вопрос. А могут ли эти платформы как-то стимулировать, в том числе, людей, собственно, под, подключиться к этой борьбе? Или это только вот такая, в общем-то, личная благотворительность, что называется? Чем хороши платформы? Да, тем, что они повышают эффективность процесса, да, улучшают экономику бизнеса и так далее. Вот все-таки работа этих платформ, она должна строиться на тяги человека к прекрасному и к спасению природы, или есть некие экономические механизмы стимулирования? Как вы считаете? Потому что, к сожалению, не все люди сознательные, с этим приходится работать. Until so far, conventional environmental campaign has been uh, blaming, finger-pointing government and the businesses. But I realize that even Greta Thunberg has been accusing business and government, but not much change has been done. The real change can come from us when we make our own payment for our CO2 emission. Then we can have the solution and we will change. How can you do it is, my idea is that, each one of us, not a donation, if we ask people to make a donation, I don't think uh, it is sustainable. It is not donation, personal deposit on a climate fund. So I deposit my money because I'm responsible for a certain quantity of CO2 emission. So this deposit will be there and it will work for climate actions, for renewable energy, or tree planting or any other climate investment. Then, when I need money later in the future, I can withdraw it back and I can use it. And even some proceeds will be added on this deposit. I call it personally determined contribution. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis the nationally determined contribution of a Paris Climate Agreement. But I always think nation is a very hollow and ambiguous concept. What is nation? Without the individual, all of us, don't make any contribution. How government alone can make a contribution? So, PDC, personally determined the contribution, has to be the basis for nationally determined the contribution. We cannot just blame government and business and waiting and watching. We should volunteer and join. I'm sure not 100% of the people will join from the beginning. I know that we need some change agents, some champions for the change. Especially young generation are very much willing to join this. This is why I think not only economic instrument, but also social campaign 
has to be joined together to make a real change for the climate or a carbon free future. Taj grad za mene postaje ne baš ugodno mjesto, barem po onim mjerama po kojima sam ja skrojen i živio svoj život. On ukida kretanje, a povećava konzumaciju u svakom pogledu. S tim što, kako reče profesor iz Južne Koreje, trebalo bi biti odgovorno trebalo bi se odgovorno odnositi prema samom disanju, jer izgleda da ta količina ugljen dioksida koja je stidljivo u Guardianu u vrijeme epidemije iscurila, nekome se potkrala greška pa je rekao da zapravo ljude zatvaraju upravo zbog tih mjera koje treba da ograniče taj ogromni broj ljudi koji dišući zapravo uzimaju vazduh, a onda izbacuju dovodi u pitanje čitav koncept ljudskog postojanja. Odnosno, da li grad koji se zove pametan podrazumiva čovjeka koji je glup ili čovjeka koji potpuno ograničeno djeluje ili kako bi rekli zagovornici iz Davosa čovjeka koji prepušta svoju organsku sudbinu u neorganske ruke. Da li se jede meso visokoproteinsko ili se jede meso vještačko za koga već čujemo čak i u Srbiji da postoje mjesta gdje se sprema fabrika tog vještačkog mjesta. Da li je kraj homo sapiensa, kako neki istoričari tvrde, zapravo nepredvidiv u narednih sto godina i narednih sto godina gdje bi na planeti nastalo, ja ne znam koliko je moguće, nek nastane u narednih 30, recimo 50.000 pametnih gradova, da li ćemo mi koji ne želimo da živimo u tim pametnim gradovima imati slobodu izbora da živimo u takozvanim glupim gradovima ili još glupim seljima. Mislim da nova vlast na planeti srećna okolnost je pa je podijeljena. Ja se nadam da je BRICS jedna institucija koja neće podleći upravo onome protiv koga se bore današnji ustanici u Africi, odnosno protiv koga se bori većina intelektualnog svijeta koja ima distancu od inovacija koje neprestano svakodnevno zapravo vode u novi život. Tačnije ili najtačnije, da li pametni grad podrazumijeva živog čovjeka od krvi i mesa ili predviđa robota za koga smo već vidjeli da je u stanju da u ping-pongu pobjedi šampiona neke regije u Kini ili koji može brže da trči u trci, ima bolji rezultat od najboljeg ljudskog rezultata u trci na 100 metara. I dok budu ti roboti se razvijeli, razvijet će se i pametni grad. Da li će onda u jednom trenutku robot koji će naučiti sam sebe da startuje ući u fazu uništenja samog čovjeka? Ništa logičnije od toga. Jer ako kad čovjek proizvede džavola, on se otme i demon zapravo preuzima vlast na njim. Tako da... Hvala vam vam. Kako vam vam vam, Istanbul ima oficijalno 16 milijuna populacija. Uh, but last two, three years, because of some refugees from Syria, Afghanistan, or Pakistan, it started to increase. And the daily population of Istanbul is almost 20 million. So it is not easy to manage this population, because this is not being combined in one place. So uh, when, I, when we check that, uh, what, what are the Istanbul's problems that we can solve uh, with the support of technology? Uh, and we are sharing with our citizens too. Our number one problem in Istanbul, the threat of earthquake. Uh, because Istanbul is founded on earthquake fault, so it is very close to be again. Last time it was happened almost 25 years ago. So more than 50,000 people died and so many buildings collapsed. We are living this threat again uh, and most probably there will be an earthquake more than 7 or 7.2. So now we are using the technology for this which districts of Istanbul is being affected. So people, if people live there, we need to renew their building because some of the buildings age is more than 30, 35 years old. So it is not possible to be, if an earthquake occurs more than 7 or 7.2, uh, most of the building will collapse and we will leave the 
so many victims, earthquake victims. So we are uh, measuring all the Istanbul, not only surface, but also underground. So we are trying to check. And we are making huge investment for early warning systems about earthquake. For now, we came to 12 or 18 seconds. Uh, it is not possible to know with earthquake more than a day or week or month, something like that. Uh, but for earthquake, we are competing with the time, so one second is very important. But we want to make it reach almost 30 seconds at least, or one minute. Uh, so this is our number one threat, so we are making the technological investment for early warning about it. And the second is, if the population is 20 million, traffic jam is the, one of the biggest problems. So, uh, with data analytics, we are measuring so many sensors, so many cameras, we are following the traffic jams. And we know every morning with our data analytic tools, we are given to our transportation department today in which uh, way, in which road and when, what will be the traffic density. So if the traffic density more than our uh, calculation, we are directly uh, getting alert to our transportation department because there can be some anomalous situation. Nor normally it should be like that. We are making comparison, for example, today's Tuesday, last Tuesday, and last one month Tuesday average, something like that. So we are trying to manage the traffic with the smart lighting, uh, smart traffic lighting, because sometimes you are waiting for on the crossroads, but the road is empty. So the traffic light should be Get, uh, green that time. You shouldn't wait for it if the water is empty. And the third one, I think this is the one of the major issue of all, of, all over the world, water consumption, so water sources. So uh, we are trying to collect the water, uh, not only for rain or any other things, but also uh, when the water is used, you should gather the water and clean it one more time for usage again. So this is one of the important issues. So with the uh, SCADA system, we are measuring the, uh, from how many kilometers we are bringing the water to Istanbul and distributing to almost 6.5 million flats. So it is not easy. We are, we are uh, measuring it each time, each uh, minute actually, because it depends on uh, power. It is changing to flow of the water. So this is very important. So we are trying to use uh, a special technology, mainly these three points, but one more additional thing, and I'm uh, finishing my phrase is, uh, in 2019 or 2020, beginning of 2020, all over the world started to live COVID. So it was, I don't know, but maybe it was a great scenario. Even if I watch it, uh, at the cinema, all over the world will be quarantined, under quarantine, and they will sit at home one week, one month, or maybe year. I would love a little bit this. They are exaggerating. But we live this almost two years. So, uh, one night, our Minister of Internal uh, announced that uh, the people who is elder than 65 years old will be under quarantine. They will not go outside. And directly we started to work with our big data. So in Istanbul, 1.3 million people who is older than 65 years old, and 400,000 of them living alone or two people, but there is no younger than 65 years old. So directly we put them on the map of Istanbul, and we distributed to these 400,000 people, and then uh, we gave to our mayor because if you know this population where they are living, so they can you can reach them because some of them need some medicine, some of them need water, some of them need some food, something like that. So uh, there are some services, takeaway services. Uh, you are ordering coffee or food to your home, something like that. We directly made an agreement with them in one hour, so we opened their order page to our call center. So our call center started to get order uh, from our students to that takeaway company. So this is being an agile uh, with the technological support actually. So this kind of things actually directly touches to our students. Pametan grad u onome što smo čuli
kada je u pitanju Istanbul, ako je to rekao bi istočnjačka njega ili želja da se 400.000 ljudi koji živi u Istanbulu koji su stari da se dođe do njih da se lakše s njima komunicira jer su manje pokretni od mlađih onda je to potpuno humano i niz drugih stvari koje ne možemo da preskočimo to su providnost organizma prevencija u bolestima s druge strane odmah se tu nameće pitanje napuštanja starog metoda liječenja u kojem doktor vidi čovjeka, vidi njegove beonjače, pogleda mu, zaviruje u nos, u uši, u kožu i dovodi do eventualnog daljeg pregleda u kojem nauka može da pomogne. Izgleda da pametni grad ne podrazumije uopšte više pametnog čovjeka nego čovjeka koji se robotizuje i na kraju dovodi u poziciju nekoga ko o svojoj sudbini ne odlučuje, nego ta perfekcija koju su stremili stari Grci se otuđila na nivo naučizma ili eventualno Boga koji može da proistekne iz te mreže u koju je čovjek više upleten nego doveden u poziciju onog građanina koji je bio ideal starih civilizacija, dakle Egipta, stare Grčke, Rima i koji sad je doveden u potpuno nezahvalnu situaciju u kome predviđanje da li će planeta da preživi, da li će je napast neki UFO ili ćemo sabi sebe da uništimo pa onda možemo da predvidimo za sto godina uopšte neće biti naše vrste. Dakle, vrsta koja proizvodi elemente koje navodno olakšavaju život, a u stvari više disciplinuju čovjeka, vidite čak i u disanju, treba da budemo ekonomični, ona, pretpostavljam, ide za tom zlatnom milijardom, unutar koje eventualno može da stvori dovoljan broj gradova, koji može da bude vjerojatno podijeljen na stotine miliona ili da bude uvećan sa brojem onih koji bi preživili eventualno nuklearnu katastrofu ili čišćenje planete. Uh, be able to lower the CO uh, emission. I don't think everything in this world is a science. And I see that most of the people around the world almost making a religion from science. I started uh, when my first uh, try to, to talk a little bit about this, not opening uh, a, a question of what it is, because it is. As smarter a city is, I think people are less smart, because you inevitably, you alienate part of you that would be smart. Smartphone is slightly becoming smarter than you. Uh, cloud slightly knows much better who you are than you yourself. And I would go to this kind of existential position of the people in between ideologies and science that is getting more and more into the cloud and knowing more and more about us. I would be always against uh, CO2 reduction from uh, our breath because at least when we uh, give a birth, the first scream that we do is from Uh, we are celebrating that we started breathing. Uh, to shorten the breath and to go into the uh, banking breath system, I think it's just part of this illusion in which full scale of uh, scientific achievement is just to be blindly followed. There is a man, there is a woman, there is something in the center of the world that I don't think a man is again in the center of the world. I think we have decentralized this point in the last century. We have a great literature, we have a great cultures. And this is the word that I wanted to say. 
that you have your Russian culture, which is developed on the basis of parallel life in between social life, uh, science, and in the end, uh, your culture, which is a root of your existence. If we go to uh, Monopoly, which was mentioned here, we could go easily to internet. Internet is, uh, Bill Gates is not a scientist. He is a man, manager who was just uh, grouping some mathematicians and making, uh, making it go through uh, the military uh, objectives. So if we speak about all of this and we forget the uh, uh, facial recognition, if we forget uh, all the danger that uh, stands behind the cloud, we are not completing the image and the picture of our future. Абсолютно с вами согласен. Есть у меня к вам еще вопрос. Доктор Айша хотела задать тоже вопрос. Actually, like, uh, I'm an advocate for digitization. And talking about clouds and having the smart mobiles more smarter than us. Actually, yesterday when I landed in Moscow, I woke up with a black screen. And everything is in my mobile. My passport, my ID, my bank card, even the telephone numbers of my mother, my daughter, and my friends, everything. And for a moment I said, okay, what should I do? I don't have a mobile, I don't have anything else. Even the organizers, how will contact me to come to the, to, the, to, the, to the conference? But then I said, okay, I have the cloud. I can't. I'm a girl. To be a technique. I need to do something. You know, as a woman, we need to do something. So I said, thank God, I have a cloud. And I can download all the data in a new device. So yes, we give everything to these devices, to the, to the systems, to be more smarter than us. But this is what we've done so that we have a backup for us. And we can free ourselves to invade, to create. Uh, learn, learning how to do nothing, this is uh, going to be the future, one of the possible uh, ways to live. But I want to, to mention you something that is very much in the root of if there is a problem uh, for all of humanity. Uh, there is a plan to make a three-state city, first smart city in Europe. Holland, in between Germany, Belgium, and Holland. So they want to put it in between three, probably the most prosperous, most progressive countries in Europe. And they are planning to do the railroad, they say, to China. What in fact happened? Something who has a plan for the future is planting three-state city, smart city, and on the land of the most profitable agriculture in Europe. Uh, the, the profit that the Dutch people were getting in the past from agriculture was $18 billion, which is a huge amount of money. Apparently, there is a great uh, emission of fertilizers, and there is a, a, a Bill Gates who is coming with his own supermarkets selling artificial meat. There is apparently a plan to do smart city in which there will be no more Dutch agriculture which was generously sending uh, flowers to the United States and to us most of the food that was quality food before Monsanto came and everybody started agreeing that uh, Monsanto food quite good. I'm not a party breaker. I just want to remind you of the, the traps and the problems of this uh, uh, almost heavenly talk about uh, science could have some great obstacles uh, even if we understand that in the cloud there could be a god, scientific god, constructed and being able to follow us because he knows much better who we are than we do.
U toliko je ovaj forum bio zanimljiv zato što na teritoriji gdje se formira novi svijet ili gdje se barem multipolarni svijet zasniva na nekim zakonima koji bi trebalo da budu pravedniji i humaniji, on nikako u tom pravednijem, u borbi za pravednije društvo ne može da robotizuje čovjeka i da ga dovede na nivo mašine. Ne može zato što u tom dijelu svijeta ljudi još uvijek vjeruju da postoji Bog. Ono jeste da je Niče rekao da je Bog mrtav, ali Niče je imao tu umjetničku slobodu da to izgovori, ali nikako nije mogao to da dokaže. Kao što u ostalom nauka ni danas ne može da dokaže da Boga nema. Postoje razne teorije, ali jedina koja je meni bliska i koja se, nadam se, u tom Brixu može da izbori za status prije svega Boga, odnosno Boga čovjeka, da ne bi upala u digitalnom zamku i da ne bi svi završili u digitalnom zatvoru. Mm-hmm.